I'm Hernan Bass, and I'm from Miami, Florida. Right now I'm working on this new series that I started last year called The Conceptualist. They're literally portraits of artists that never existed. A lot of the characters in my work were up to really weird situations and circumstances that they were being sort of drawn into. I thought a fun way to sort of capitalize on that and make them maybe less of a weirdo would be to put them under the umbrella of being a conceptual artist and um, not have someone sort of scratch their head like, why are they doing that? Like, well, I guess it's art, you know? <laughs> a lot of the work in the show kind of leans towards things that would normally be craft to most people. But by elevating it and calling it conceptual art, like it becomes something more special. In this painting, you'll see the figure like holding this popsicle stick and it stems from him being a purist in his craft. To make this, if he ate a popsicle every day, it would kill him off, basically. <laughs> so in the painting, he's making his own coffin out of popsicle sticks. I remember as a child in the 80s, they called it the milk carton kids, and it's basically the children go missing and they would start putting photographs of them on milk cartons. So this artist that I imagined, like whenever he feels lost personally, like he just goes to the supermarket, takes a Polaroid self-portrait, um, and then slaps it on a milk carton and puts it back in the fridge for someone to find later. <laughs> I definitely think dark humor plays into the work quite a bit. The the milk carton kid, for example, yes, that's a really sad circumstance, but like, but him as a person, I think it's kind of funny, you know, like that's a weird thing to do. <laughs> There's another painting in the show, what looks like a prom night classic photo, like that you pose for, but he's got a black eye for some reason, and then you realize he's wearing multiple boutonnieres. So the reason he has that black eye is because he invited too many people to the prom. His performances have all been based on disappointment. My whole Work in general has always started with a good story. When I was younger, I was very much into writing, so I think when I stopped doing that, this is sort of my way of curtailing that practice. <laughs> so I kind of just picture them as if I'm writing a book, basically, like this is the character, and like that's who I'm exploring at the moment. If there's a thread in the work, I think it's, it's visible through the sort of interest that I have um, outside of the work, like the occults and all the sort of weird stuff that I get into. So I collect a lot of like Victorian mourning objects and these are Victorian tear catchers and that's literally what you do. You're supposed to cry into them and collect your tears for the person you're mourning. I'm very fond of and collect a lot of like hair works too. These are like made with the person who died's like actual hair like and they construct a scene of their gravesite but out of their hair. The same as collecting art I guess. Having one of those objects like just satisfies me for some reason. I think of the whole body of work as being something that in the end just be like, if it was a book, it'd be like my version of like Time Life's Mysteries of the Unknown. Like it's sort of an anthology of the strange, like a visual Atlas Obscura kind of thing. <laughs> that sort of becomes an archive of like the weird things of the world that like people don't particularly notice or care for, but you know, I find super interesting. <laughs>